Hello again. I'm back with another clock to repair. I found this one at a flea market and I thought it was rather unusual. It's a pharmacy clock. I didn't know if it worked or not. The one thing I noticed right off the bat was that the entire mechanism, the housing, the motor, everything, it's, it rotates. It's not secure in here. I don't know why, but I would imagine it can't be too difficult to get it uh, tight so it's not moving around. When I got it home and plugged it in, the other thing I discovered was that it doesn't run. So I'm going to look to open it up, try to figure out what's wrong with it. Other thing of interest is that there's no markings on the back, so I have no idea the manufacturer, how old it is. Maybe there'll be some writing on the inside uh, that will give me that information. But the next step is going to be, let me get this set up on my uh, work table and start to take it apart. Okay, let's get started. Turn it over. Only a couple of nuts here. We'll undo them and see what happens. Here's the first one. And now this little one. Okay. Now the first step in figuring out why this clock is not running is let me check for some continuity. I have to get my own meter for that. Let's flip it on. Now if the wiring is intact in here, when I touch the leads to the plug, I should see numbers flashing on the screen here. And I'm not getting any readings. Oh, there we go. Okay, it looks like it's intact, so uh, current should be going through it when it's plugged in. And there's some other reason why it's not running. So next, have to figure out a way to take this off of the frame. And what I'm seeing here, I see some metal tabs bent around the edge. Let me undo those, and I believe that the whole dial should just come out. I've bent away two of the three. Let me do the third one. Uh, there we go. Okay, the next step I'll going to remove the hands from the face just to prevent any risk of uh, damaging them. They look like friction grip. I should be able to just pry them off. But let me get the proper tool for that, which is just a small screwdriver. That wasn't too bad. Next one I'm seeing are some small nuts here and here. And I believe that's, that is what's holding this housing onto the whole motor. So let me work on taking those off. It also looks as if this stem is functioning as a nut as well. So there's three of them. And in case when I remove this, there's more than one way to position it back on. I like to put a little mark by one spot. That way there's no mistake in lining things up. All right. Take this off.
Okay, that's coming off. Now, if you can see all the gears that are in here, I don't want to lift this whole thing off because it might cause them all to fall out of position. I have to take a closer look, maybe take a few photos of it so I know exactly how this uh, goes together. So let me work on that. And once I know how it's supposed to look, I will continue. And let me gather these pieces up here so nothing gets lost. Okay, back, back to looking at this. Okay, I've taken a lot of photos. I think I know the positioning of the gears. It also looks as if I can hold down this brass plate. I should be able to remove the motor without disturbing anything underneath it. Let's try that. Okay. This plate looks like it's going to lift right up from uh, over the gears. So let me take a closer look at that before trying to do it. I don't want to have things fall apart. And then I'll be able to check more closely to see why this motor is not working. So let me take another look. I think I can slip this off. The uh, set knob here I should be able to remove. Now, there we go. And there you have it. I'll take a couple more photos of this arrangement. But before I do that, I'm gonna plug this back in and try to figure out why it's not running. It's plugged in, let me turn it on. And what do you know, it's running. So perhaps all my jostling around with it freed something up. It looks like a sealed motor, so I can't really take it apart. But I'll try to figure out a way to get some uh, oil in here to lubricate it a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to proceed with removing all of these gears and cleaning everything up and then just looking to reassemble it. So let me get to work on that. Let me show how these come apart. Here's one. Two, three, four, five. This one is riveted in place, so that's not coming off. And the other thing I'm noticing is that the, the face of the dial seems to be glued to this plate, so I can't remove that either. If I could, I'd look to thoroughly clean uh, this plate, I'll just end up probably putting a little bit of oil around the you know, edges of it. The rest of the gears, though, I can ultrasonic them and get them nice and clean. And, and I'll take a closer look at the motor, figure out where I can apply some oil. Once I have all that figured out and cleaned up, I will continue. I've cleaned and lubricated all the gears and the plates, and the best way to do that is you want to use a very fine synthetic clock oil and even one drop of it is too much the, the best way to do it is get a little oil well put in a couple of drops and using what's known as an oil pen it picks up a tiny amount of oil and you only have to touch it to the top of the pivot on the gear very very little bit on either end and I've done that to all these gears, and now I'm going to look to reassemble it. We'll see how that goes. That's starting with this one. Okay, once they're in, I have to reposition the top plate along with the uh, set knob. Oop. 
what I have to do next is lift it up and sort of tease in the pivots of all the gears properly into the little holes, the bushings they're sometimes called. That'll take a few minutes, so let me work on that. And once it's all reassembled, we'll continue. I've got the plate seated back on. Everything is lined up in the proper position. And you can see when I turn the set knob, you can see the gears turning in here. So I'm pretty sure everything is lined up properly. The way to secure it now would be to seat the motor over it and then put the nuts over here, but I'm not ready to do that yet. What I have to do is work on getting some lubricant into the motor. Now I'm pretty sure I can get a little bit of oil around this center spindle here. But what's interesting is I notice on the back, this little, it looks almost like a piece of felt. And when I try to pick it out of here, it's almost the same consistency of what you would find in a cigarette lighter where you add your lighter fluid. But you can see that's the center stem of the motor. So I figure I can put a little bit of oil in here <clears throat> as well as around here. Let it soak in for a while and then uh, see if it's running consistently and also if it's running quieter. It has been a little bit on the noisy side and uh, that would be a problem if I can't get it to run quiet. So let me get set up here and I'll add some oil to it. Same as before, I'm going to put a little bit of oil in my oil well here. And using the oil pin, let's get this little felt pad out. Just placing some oil around the spindle. And, and trying to get it in alongside this little flywheel type of a setup I have here. Anyway, it'll take me a while to work it all the way around. Let me do that. Once I have it all thoroughly oiled, I'll give it a run. And uh, when I continue, we'll see how, uh, how well it's running. Okay, you're going to laugh at this. Much to my surprise, as I started to handle this, I discovered that this whole little flywheel thing comes right out. So now it's going to be quite easy to get some oil in the center here, as well as along this whole spindle, which should definitely free up any uh, difficulty in turning or any noises that it was making. So let me get back to work oiling it up and then I'll let it run for a while. And again, we'll see if it's uh, running properly and as well as quietly. I've oiled the motor. It's been running now for about an hour and it's been running quiet. So what I want to do next is position this back over uh, the gear assembly. Let's see if I can get this on. Okay. Next I have to place the housing back over it and then secure it with the nuts. I have to slide it up the wire here. Okay. Next, I'm going to secure it with a couple of nuts here and the long stem, one of which went over here. Once I have the three of them on, then we'll continue. The housing is secured with the two nuts and the little stem. Now I have to slip the uh, back of the case over it. Oops. good. Okay. What I have to do next is reseat the hands.
And we should start with the hour hand. Put it on pointing at 12. And the minute hand. And the second hand. Okay, what I have to do next is secure this back into the rim by bending these little tabs. So let me work on that and once this is secured, I'll continue. I've bent the tabs to secure the clock to the uh, to the frame. The only problem I still have is that it still rotates. So what I've decided to do is with a couple of pieces of Gorilla Tape, which is very strong, I'm just gonna secure it on the sides here. Let's give that a try. One piece there. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Let me get this set up, plug it back in, and we'll see if it's running. And by the way, I can mention that there was no writing on the inside at all. I still have no idea who manufactured this clock, how old it is, but let's see if it works. Before I plug it in to give it a final test, I decided to try to look up this clock to see if I could find it. And I searched for pharmacy clocks and found this clock. Uh, it was, I found it on eBay as well as WorthPoint and uh, a few other sites. And it turns out it's a Richard A. Klein brass pharmacy clock with alchemy symbols. It's from the 1960s. And Richard A. Klein was an individual who was into clock making. He made knives, he did woodworking amongst other things. Uh, and he died at the age of 84 in 2021. So a bit of uh, history on it, which is good to know. Let me, uh, I have it plugged in, let me turn it on. And it's running, and I'm happy to say it's running quietly. So there you go. It's a Richard A. Klein pharmacy clock from the 1960s. Hope you enjoyed the video. That pretty much wraps things up. Bye for now.